Hello and welcome to worship. Sing Alleluia, Christ is risen. And in this Easter truth, we too rise to welcome a new week. Full of blessings, we rise to face impossible challenges that are set before us. We rise all together, one church. We rise like seeds planted throughout Oak Lawn, Chicago, Illinois, the United States, and North America. We rise with Christ because this day is a gift that's too good to meet laying down. In this worship, God hears our prayers and our praise. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and rooms with your grace that we may receive mutual blessings in this time. My name is Jason Anderson, pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church. Thank you for your faithfulness. Sing Alleluia, Christ is risen. The reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Here ends the reading. Good morning, everyone. Remember last week how we talked about how important it is to plant seeds in good soil? Well, I did that and my seeds are starting to grow, but they're not alone. I have plants growing in my garden that I didn't even plant there. Do you know what we call those? Those are called weeds. A weed is a plant that grows somewhere where you don't really want it to grow. And in today's parable, Jesus talks about weeds and weeds growing in a large field. And in my garden, I pull the weeds to make sure my plants get enough soil and water. But in this parable, the farmer tells his workers not to pull the weeds. In the same way that Jesus was talking about seeds last week, but really talking about us, this week, he's not really talking about weeds. Jesus is showing us that some people can be like weeds. Now, sometimes it can be hard to tell what's a flower and what's a weed, but after some learning and researching, you could tell the difference. But with people, it's a little more difficult to tell who are the flowers, the good people, and who are the weeds, the bad people. But in today's parable, Jesus makes it pretty clear that that's not really our job to decide who are the good people in the world and who are the bad people in the world. He tells us that our job is just to love everyone. And just like the farmer tells his workers not to cut down the weeds, Jesus tells us not to cut down other people or to toss them to the side, but to love them. And sometimes this can be hard. But on the last day of VBS, we learn Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus! So with Jesus' power, we can love everyone and not judge them, but we can be good friends. 
So let's pray together and ask God for help. You can repeat after me. Dear God, help us to love everyone around us, even those it's a little harder to love. Thanks for loving us. We love you so much. Amen. Bye friends, have an awesome day. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore again, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burnt, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable about the wheat in the fields. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Grace, how sweet it sounds, and even better, how it feels, and peace. What once was the cause of anguish is now no more. You can relax. Take a deep breath. As a pastor cut off from the congregation, Paul reminds the Romans about their place with God. From Romans 8 today, we are reminded of God's generous love, of God choosing us, adopting us, and making us co-heirs with Christ. Friends, God gives us everything. Paul also reminds us that nothing worth having comes without some kind of fight. You gotta kick at the darkness till it bleeds daylight. I think that's Bruce Coburn. Right. Okay, easy confusion. But Paul reminds us that the sufferings of this present age are not worth comparing to the glory about to be revealed to us. And the trouble is patience. At least, that's my problem. We wait with eager longing for something that feels more like glory because, because this feels like quarantine. But here's the thing. You know, like how the grass isn't greener on the other side? The glory isn't greener on the other side of the fence. There is something holy in what is painful. In this painful present, God is stirring something within us, something great. But it's not easy. It's not comfortable. It calls us out of our comfort zone and into our faith zone. Here is where Christ shows up in the least of these to, to teach us grown-ups that, that we can do something hard. I heard children singing during VBS this week. 
learning how Jesus, like a train, pulls us through, uh, giving us power, strength, hope, love, and spirit to do hard things. It's beautiful when we hear the children teach us these lessons, because in those little voices surely is the voice of Christ. For some of you, it's hard to move your worship life into your home life. But here you are. And your ordinary home has become an extraordinary extension of the church. Your ordinary heart has become the dwelling place of God. You are adopted by God and called beloved. Inside and out, you are sanctuary. And yes, we are fighting cancer. And yes, we are carrying all the burdens of COVID-19. Yes, we are annoyed or hurt by those we love. Yes, we are so sick of fundraising. Yes, we are frustrated. Yes, we are pushed and pulled by our addictions. Yes, we are kicking at the darkness. But in all anguish, stands Christ with us, who bleeds new life. Our world is filled with seen and unseen dangers, toils, and snares. Baited in the flesh, perhaps, as Paul might say, referring to our penchant for instant gratification. But as we gather online in worship, each one of you is living proof that grace has brought you safe thus far, and grace will lead you home. You, beloved child of God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, 
and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed in the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions, Lord, in your mercy. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay, Lord, in your mercy. God of the nations, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and who are suffering in any way, especially those suffering as a result of COVID-19. God, grant healing to members of our congregation who are sick or unwell. We pray for Doris, Donna, Marcy, Jim, Linda, Ashley, Ruth, Bob, Thomas, Carl, Karen, Margie, Linda, Linda, Eleanor. Lord, in your mercy. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all time and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation, Lord, in your mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. So here is the hymnal that you are familiar with. This is the hymnal that we are now using. I don't remember when it came out exactly, pretty sure it was 2006, around the time when I was ordained. Introducing this hymnal was not a big deal. This is what it replaces the Lutheran Book of Worship. This one came out, I think, in around 1979, like the same time when I came about. So this hymnal is almost as old as me. And uh, the one before it, I believe, was also red, which is why we don't call this one red. We call this one cranberry. I mean, can you imagine the controversy if we called this one red? Also, this one came out with some controversy as well because this one introduced something wildly radical. It's called shaking hands and sharing God's peace. I know, I know, that sounds weird this time because of course we don't do any touching at all. And apparently the non-touching thing is a Lutheran tradition. And so the sharing of God's peace, ironic that that would be a source of controversy. Anyway, so here's the thing. We're going to share God's peace without touching. And you might have heard me uh, explain this one to you before, actually at our last worship service before we had our social distancing. It's from American Sign Language, where you go like this. That is, God's peace be with you. At least I've been told that's what it means. Uh, so the way I think of it is like, wipe, wipe, good. All right, so, God's peace be with you, and also with me.